Good afternoon everybody. A little bit different today. We're in the workshop. Look around you. Well you can only look as far as the camera is, is looking. You can't actually see to the side because I'm not pointing the camera there and you can't see to that side because I'm not pointing the camera there. You can see me and you can see what's behind me. So you take my word for it, we're in the workshop. Now why are we in a workshop? Well we, we're going to do a, a review and we're going to do a, a review of an item of equipment which is not to do with cycling funnily enough. So what are we going to do? It is this and what is this you may ask well this is a dyson vacuum cleaner and it is the cyclone v10 animal uh it's not called the animal because you can suck up animals with it although i imagine you could probably suck up small uh, a small animal or insects you can certainly suck up insects uh, 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 an animal of a greater size might get stuck in the in the filter which we might come to later Anyway, why do I want to talk about it? Well, I want to talk about it because I've had a few issues with it, which I'm, I kind of feel like sharing with you. Now, first thing to say, okay, you all know about Dyson. And let me say, first of all, I couldn't care less that James Dyson is a Brexiter. Okay, I am a Remainer myself. Um, I don't agree with Brexiters, but it's not, it's not a crime if people want to be a Brexiter. Fine, good luck to them. Secondly, I couldn't care less that he's moved his production or he's gone to live in Singapore. Lots of companies uh, do their manufacturing overseas, lots of them do it in China. He's moved to Singapore because his main market is in the Far East. He can manufacture stuff cheaper there. He's interested in developing electric cars, so he goes to the best manufacturing place. I don't have a problem with that. This vacuum cleaner, first of all, thing to say is it's expensive. I think it was 349 quid. It might have been 299, but I have a funny feeling it was 349. Bought it in John Lewis, decent store, nothing to complain about with regard to John Lewis. So, what is it? Well, this is a vacuum cleaner. I'm going to switch it on. And that makes a noise and it sucks stuff up and it swirls around in here. And you've probably seen all the videos and stuff, so you know how it works. So, why do I want to talk about it? Well, I've had a couple of issues with it. First things first, this thing at the back here is a filter, okay? And it says you should clean the filter regularly. You run it under the hot tap. So I'd had the vacuum cleaner for no more than two weeks and I thought, well, I'll clean the filter. So I cleaned the filter, uh, dried it off, put it back in, it didn't work. I thought, well, what's, that's a bit funny, why is that? So I waited a bit, I tried it, it still didn't work, tried to go online, still didn't work. So I contacted customer support and they said, oh, well, we'll send an engineer out to you. So good, good customer service, can't complain about that. And the engineer said, well, if the filter is not 100% dry, it won't work. So you need to dry off the filter, put it in the airing cupboard. That's the best thing, 24 hours. Um, and so for 24 hours, by the way, you haven't got a vacuum cleaner, important point there. Um, but what it doesn't say in the instructions is if the filter is not 100% dry, the vacuum cleaner will not work. So a little bit annoyed about that, but okay, decent customer service. Anyway, a couple of months went by and the um, vacuum cleaner stopped working. So there's an indication on here. Can you see that? I'll hold it up. Um, it's, it's on here, kind of light comes up and a lesson message saying filter blocked. So you think, okay, I'll take the filter out and I'll clean it, put it back in, didn't work. So then you're having a look now, trying to sort it out, still doesn't work. And so it took it apart and then you say, aha, right, this is how you empty it, by the way. You go like that and you empty that into the bin. So here is a kind of uh, air inlet. And if you have a tiny little piece of plastic or something like that, a bit of rubbish that you sucked up off the floor and that is blocked, then it won't work, okay? So, all right, I found it, managed to get it out with a little screwdriver and it works again. So, again, a little bit annoyed, but it started to work. So, then, I uh, hope you're still with me. Um, here we have the stick and this is the long stick and you have a, sorry, just taking this apart now stick nothing wrong with the stick so i'll put that over there yeah this is this is called the floor tool okay so this is what you rub along the floor i know you can't see me because the camera's not pointing in the right direction anyway you know how a vacuum cleaner works you rub it along and it's got this kind of this kind of ball joint can you see that so it swivels around every direction so you put it onto the end of the stick you do your vacuum cleaning and you move it around so far so good now here this is a this is a new one by the way and we'll come to that in a minute here is the original one you see this look the thing is fucked right so 
my wife was doing the vacuum cleaning. My wife doesn't always do the vacuum cleaning, by the way. Quite often I do it. Anyway, she was doing the vacuum cleaning. She said it's not working properly. I said, oh, come on, darling, you've got another problem. And anyway, I had a look at it. It seemed all right to me. So then the next day I was using it, and blow me, this fucking thing had come apart. Right? Now, you say to yourself, well, you know, fair wear and tear. No. Right? So this, I don't know if you can see this. This is made of plastic. Okay? Now, it might be quite strong plastic, but it's made of plastic. And what it needs to do is it needs to swivel, needs to turn around, needs to adjust, needs to move. And, of course, you're vacuum cleaning, so you knock it into a chair leg or a table leg. You don't do it hard, but you're doing a little bit. So this is always under strain. And what happens to plastic, this kind of brittle plastic, when it's under strain, after a while it's going to break. And that's what happens. It broke. Now, this vacuum cleaner is, what, five months old, perhaps? Now, to me, that should not happen. That is a design fault. The problem with a filter, that is a design fault. Now... I went, I emailed uh, customer service. I said, I'm not happy, guys. Um, this was broken. I don't think it should have broken. Uh, I want a replacement. And they emailed me straight back in the afternoon. They said, yep, we'll send you a new one um, under warranty. So I don't, I'm not complaining about customer service. Customer service has been decent so far. But a 349 pound vacuum cleaner that has gone wrong three times, and you might say, well, it's all your, it's your fault, Julian. What's the, what's the matter with you? You had a bit of blockage in it, you sorted the blockage out, it was clean. Um, you changed the filter, the filter wasn't properly dry, so it didn't work, that's your own fault. And this one, no, that's not my fault. So, what you've got to say to yourself is, a vacuum cleaner that costs £349 should not go wrong like that as quickly. What has it got in its favour? Well, it's, it's quite a good suction action. Uh, it's a pretty colour, you see that? Sort of sort of purple and, and grey, it's all, it's all plastic, it's quite, it's quite heavy. Um, and, you know, I'm a person of advancing years. I've got a kind of little bit of tennis elbow, actually. So not from playing tennis, by the way. Um, and so I've uh, got a bit of pain in my in my arm. And it's a little bit difficult to push them out. Now you say, okay, well, that's not their fault. You know, there's, there's quite a lot of technology built into that. And it's quite a heavy battery. So, but, you know, you, you're carrying it upstairs. And previously we had a Henry. In fact, we still got a Henry because we kept it because you never know when you might need a Henry. And uh, when this goes wrong, as it does, it's gone wrong three times now, we dig out the old Henry. Now, the reason we changed from the Henry was, A, I fancied a Dyson, um, but also we were finding the, Dyson, the Henry quite heavy to carry up the stairs. So we thought, well, we'll get a Dyson, move it around quite easily. Uh, and yes, that, that thing has happened. But the Henry, the Henry is a fabulous vacuum cleaner. And if you've never had a Henry, it costs you about 110 quid, something like that. Um, there's a lot of metal in the Henry, it's solidly made, lasts forever. There's no little tiny filter things that gets blocked up. The thing just works, okay? Whereas the Dyson, you pay 350 quid, and it doesn't fucking work. I mean, what, what is that? You know, Brexit, don't mind you being a Brexit of James. Don't mind you moving your production to Singapore, but sort out your design issues, right? The thing is not fit for purpose. If the floor head cleaner can break that easily and, and I'm not banging it into things you know I'm not trying to break it I'm not trying to test the the strength of the ball joint I'm just using it normally and it fell apart so there you are in the workshop uh Dyson vacuum cleaner uh can I recommend it no no 349 quid you're having a laugh uh get a Henry um or get a Dyson because it looks nice and you've got 349 quid sitting around that you don't know what to do with then yeah okay get a Dyson but beware it's not perfect by no means perfect i'm probably not the first person to say this the other thing is and i'm just going to say this finally the way you empty it is you you do that you see that do that now this this is plastic now how long is that going to last because you shit um you put it in the bin now if you've got a lot of cat fur and I'm, i've got a cat and i vacuum clean the cat so it ends up with a lot of cat fur in it um you, you're going to bang it against the side of the bin, aren't you? Because that's the only way to get the stuff out. Well, how long is this bit of plastic going to last when you bang it against the side of the bin? Now, you can say, well, don't bang it against the side of the bin, Julian. But, you, you know, you, it's a tool. You've got to be able to use a tool, and the tool's got to be robust. It's got to be able to stand up to day-to-day -day wear. And my concern about this, Dyson, is that I don't think it stands up to day-to-day -to -day wear. So that's the Dyson. See you next time.